Chief Ross then set out to shame Jackson and the supporters of Indian removal, and he was going to use the United States federal courts to do it. At least what is left. Along with America's most esteemed advocate, former Attorney General William Wirt, Ross and his closest advisors began to frame the Cherokees' argument for self-determination in their own territory. <laughs> The Cherokee Nation and their supporters filed more than a dozen separate suits in federal court. Two made it all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States. The question in both cases was the flashpoint of American politics in 1830. Where did federal authority end and states' rights begin? Did federal treaties with the Cherokee Nation supersede Georgia state law? Or could Georgia do as she pleased within her borders? The court dodged the question in the first case, but in the second, Worcester v. Georgia, it could not. Samuel Worcester, a missionary who lived in the Cherokee Nation, had been jailed by Georgia officials for refusing to take an oath of allegiance. Wirt argued that his arrest was unconstitutional, that Cherokee tribal laws could not be written over by the state of Georgia. The opinion of the court, written by Chief Justice John Marshall, could not have been more clear. The Cherokee Nation is a distinct community, Marshall wrote, occupying its own territory with boundaries accurately described, in which the laws of Georgia can have no force, and which the citizens of Georgia have no right to enter, but with the assent of the Cherokees themselves. What else could you ask for but a very clear and sympathetic order of the highest court in the land, interpreting the supreme law of the land. And the Cherokees just were ecstatic. They followed the law. They followed this policy of a government-to-government -government relationship. And the Supreme Court decision was a complete vindication. Now, finally, this is their victory. Now they'll have some protection. John Ridge was still in Washington when he got word that the state of Georgia was refusing to recognize the Supreme Court decision or the sovereignty of the Cherokee Nation. He goes to the White House and gets an audience with President Jackson. He asked him bluntly if he will force Georgia to comply with the Supreme Court's order. And Jackson says he will not. Andrew Jackson, the only president in the history of the United States to openly defy a Supreme Court order. He is said to have remarked that Chief Justice Marshall made his decision, let him enforce it. And to the Georgians, he said, light a fire under them. They'll move. 